Hello everyone, I'm Ace of Clubsky, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for the Intuitive PLL on a Rubik's Cube. So, for those of you who may not know, um, the PLL is the final step in solving a Rubik's Cube with the Friedrich method. Um, it comes right after the OLL, where you get all the yellow pieces on top, assuming that you started with the white. Basically, you get all the top pieces all on the top, oriented so that they're the same color, and then you have to get all the pieces matched up in the correct spot, so you cube is solved. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you only, technically, you do need two algorithms, the T permutation algorithm and the Y permutation algorithm, which is not too difficult to memorize because they are really all the same moves done in a different order for the two different ones. So, um, let's get right into this. All right, so let's get into this. Um, basically, what I'm going to show you is all of the different cases. Um, I'm also going to show you the two cases that you do need to know the algorithms for. Um, now, to learn those algorithms, the t-perm and the y-perm, I recommend that you watch Monkey Dude 1313 video, and um, that will help you. So, uh, here's the first algorithm. That was a t-perm, t-permutation, which switches these two corners, and so you just switch the back. The other one is the Y permutation, which is like this, and that switches these corners, these two edges over here, or these, uh, yeah, corner pieces, and that's that. So those are the only two algorithms that you need to know. They look kind of complicated, but once you actually um, I highly recommend if you write them out on index cards and you draw a picture of what it looks like. It's a lot easier to learn. That's how I learned all of my algorithms. Now, for the interesting part, for the intuitive steps. First of all, I'm going to show you the edge cycles, which look like these. When you have the edge, this is, I believe, a um, clockwise edge cycle. Yes. So, what that means is that this green piece needs to go here, this red piece needs to go here, and then this blue piece needs to go here, which makes a clockwise circle. Pretty simple. Now, this is also pretty simple to solve. Once This may seem a bit complicated when I first show it, but hopefully uh, when you sit down and actually try it, it'll make a lot more sense. So basically, let me get a piece with a bit more contrast here. Blue and green. I'm kind of like how blind, so that's not the best contrast for me. But here is what you do first thing you do is you push this down so you have the green on the bottom and then you push that to the side pretty much all you're going to do your goal just so you don't have to think about this as a, in a sense of an algorithm you're going to take this piece and just push it to the side okay and then you push this back up to where it belongs so now you have this piece riding right along the bottom you're going to do an up turn until see that it's green on the bottom so I'm going to turn it until I have the green here on the edges and we're going to put that right there so just switch the pieces out simply, like so, and then push that up. So now we have a red here. I'll turn that again, right here. And that's where the red goes. And then the last piece, we'll put right there. And as you can see, we have solved the cube. Very simple. I will go over that again in case you didn't get that. Once again, all we're doing is taking this piece. We're going to push it down into the side, so it's in this corner. Um, it doesn't really matter which corner, just as long as you mirror everything. So, if you wanted it to be in the left corner, you could just go here. But I prefer it in the right. So, yeah. Now, this is orange, so we're going to turn this twice. Push it in the orange space. Push that back up. Going to do another turn. There's the blue space. Put it there. And the last one, the red space. Right there. Very simple concept. Um, like I said, if you're not playing with a cube, it may seem kind of like, like, whoa, what's going on? But once you work with it a little bit, it should make some more sense. All right, so now I'm going to briefly go over the counterclockwise edge cycle, which is just the same thing, but the pieces need to go in the opposite direction. So, like before, actually, reverse of before, we have blue needs to go here, red needs to go here, and orange needs to go here, so it makes a counterclockwise circle. Also, it's done in the exact same way, just with um, slightly different steps, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense once I actually do it. So we're doing the same thing, once again, pushing this piece down here, so we have the orange, 
but the only thing that's different is we do, instead of turning once and putting this piece here, we turn twice and put it here, because that's the orange. It matches up. We do one more turn here, and then one more turn here. So you're pretty much doing the same moves, but just in the reverse order. So instead of um, instead of turning once like you would normally, if that makes sense, because this piece goes here. So you'd normally just turn the up piece once, this piece once, and then you'd turn twice the end width. You're pretty much doing the exact same in the opposite. So that's that. The next thing I'm going to show you is called a, um, I believe, a Z permutation. I'm just make sure that that's right. Um, and it looks like this. That looked like a really, really complicated algorithm, but it's very simple in execution. And what a Z-perm is, is when you have the green and the red switched. So this one needs to go here, this one needs to go here, and the same thing is for the back. This one needs to go here, that one needs to go here. Very simple uh, to recognize. And it's also done very similarly to how we've done it before. Slightly differently, but very similar, nonetheless. Once again, I'm colorblind, so that's not the best contrast. I'll start with the blue and orange. Okay. So, first step is exactly the same. You take this piece, put it down, push that up. Exactly the same. Very simple. The next part, you push this over. This is orange, so we push this here. Just like that. We go down here, just like so. And this was looking mixed up, but we have to do an upturn, and we get back to, here's a green piece. We'll push this down, and push this here. And you can see that that fixes it. I'll go over that again, once again, for clarification. And as you can see, it looks like you're doing a lot of moves, and you are, but it's very simple what you are actually doing. So, once again, these pieces need to switch, and we'll take this piece, put it on the bottom, turn that, put it where it needs to go, turn that, and put that where it needs to go. We'll turn this once, and switch these pieces, and you can see, we're done. Very simple. Once again, um, there's also a permutate. This isn't, um, I wouldn't really so much consider this an algorithm because once you know what's going on, it's, um, it's really just an intuitive thing. You know what you're doing and everything. Um, and that is, I'm not exactly sure what this, what this is called. It's the H perm. I'm sorry. Um, where the opposite pieces are switched. This is done slightly differently than before. Um, and because it's just a lot quicker than, than actually going around and switching the pieces like I was doing. This one is done, like I said, you have these pieces switched, you're going to do an M, I'm just going to show you, because I don't really like just presenting things in an algorithm form. You're going to turn this piece down, center piece down, and you're going to switch the pieces, if that makes sense. Let me do that a little bit slower. So you have this center piece. These pieces need to switch. And you see, if I turn this down, we have these pieces. These pieces on the bottom are the ones that need to switch. So we'll turn them so we have green there and put that back on the top. These are already permuted. These are where they need to be. We'll do an up turn and we'll do the same thing here. We'll put those on the bottom and push them here and that switches them. And as you can see, that's that. Now, when you're doing the second part, don't get confused because you will see different colors. And what I mean by that is what I'm going to explain right now. Okay, so once again, we're here. This makes sense because we do here, and you can see the green going in the right place. It's nice and simple. But when you turn it and you do that, it looks like this red's not going in the right place. But when you actually push it up, it is. So everything's fine. Just a little note. Very small. Um, and that is pretty much going to cover your PLL. That is how you promote the last, the last layer, the last step. It's fairly simple. You do have to work with it a little bit so you understand everything. And I guess just because this took a little bit less time than I expected, I will go over the algorithms that you do need to know. I'm going to go over how I actually learned my algorithms for this, for the whole Friedrich method. As you can see, I used flashcards. Here's how I learned the, the pr different permutations. I have my earlier, the OLL steps right here. As you can see, I have the different cases written here, and then on the back, I have the actual algorithm, and I have the faster algorithm there on the bottom. This is um, according to Monkey Dude 1313's video, and you can see it's that. 
Another ugly one there. We have the soon case and anti soon. Um, I have the T permutation algorithm right here, the headlights, and all that good stuff. So this is the best way, I believe, to learn this, at least for me. I learned this whole, all the algorithms in about a week, in about a week. Um, and yeah, they stick pretty well. It's, it's um, really good because there's visual recognition and it, it just really helps you remember. I mean, I really recommend this. Recommend trying this if you haven't learned all your algorithms yet, or if perhaps you're going back to uh, intuitive or you're learning algorithm F2L uh, or learning a lot of algorithms for whatever. I highly recommend using this for that. You know, if you're using parodies, whatever, on big cubes, it's a very effective way to learn algorithms. So. With that said, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please comment down there. And thank you for watching. I will hopefully be putting more videos that are helpful up soon. So thank you and goodbye.